sold to some Russians, and uh, I think he sold a house to one several years back. That, that's his connection. When you talk about the other side, you look at what the Obama administration's connections were. You have a Secretary of State that was selling a fifth of our country's uranium. You have a Clinton Foundation concern with, with uh, some of the donations they got. You've got the former president, her husband, giving paid speeches, getting a personal call from Vladimir Putin. You've got a stated goal of their um, of that administration, of Secretary Clinton, to have a reset Russia. So when you compare the two sides in terms of who's actually engaging with Russia, uh, trying to strengthen them, trying to act with them, trying to interact with them, it is night and day between our actions and her actions, and yet no one questioned what she was doing or how she was handling it. So and yet, her pattern of behavior is more suspicious than President Trump? I, I think that if you compare the two, it's definitely, when you talk about the stuff that went to their foundation, the concerns that existed around the sale of one-fifth of all the country's uranium, the paid speeches, the personal calls from Vladimir Putin. I think that when you want to look at a connection to Russia, there is a clear one there and much less of one that ever existed on, on this side. Trey. Yeah, Sean, I just have uh, one, for Wait, Hold on. Another, one other thing. Um, so, Sean, in terms of the, the Nunez uh, chronology, uh, just to clarify, when we're asking questions about process like Gates and people, we're not attempting to ascertain the geography of the executive complex. We want to know who knew what when. I understand that. So my question is, so I will ask that directly. Forget about the technical questions. Mr. Nunez was on the campus. You say we don't know who let him in the gate, so right. apparently it is, it is, and you described, I believe, this is a normal process, right? Tell me if it is normal the way that I am describing it. Mr. Nunez, the head of an investigatory committee, is allowed to roam around the executive complex, we don't know who let him in, to speak to two deputy-level members of the National Security Council. He is then allowed to see information. He then obtains an appointment, from, from my understanding of the chronology, with the President of the United States to disgorge that information. He then goes public with that information. Then, seven or so days later, you say it would be appropriate for everybody to come down here and look at it. Is that a normal process? Well, I, A, I would take issue with a, a number of the aspects of your chronology. Number one, which you're forgetting, is that initially he is the one that publicly said well before any of this came to light in terms of the president's <coughs> March 5th tweet uh, that he was just looking into this whole matter. He, according to John Roberts, his own uh, reporting, just said that neither of those individuals, as described in your paper's reporting, are accurate. Um, so I would dispute several of the pieces of that. And then as far as him roaming around the White House. No, I understand this, but, but you, again, you jump to a ton of conclusions about, and, and again, I, I love watching some of these shows where they jump to conclusions for all, hold on. Several times prejudge the investigation is clearing uh, the White House. You've said it twice at the podium today. Right. So we're what I'm saying is, because I'm focused on the substance of this, Glenn, I'm actually, I, it, right, and so where has any of the reporting been in, in your paper about Evelyn Fawkes and her revelation that this is what they sought to do? Where has been the reporting in your paper that NBC News just recently covered that other officials? You seem to be really focused on who showed up where and what door they went in and how it happened. To answer your question, yes, it's appropriate for a member of Congress to contact someone who has contacted him according to some of these reports. I don't know the answer to that, but if you're asking me is it appropriate for a member of Congress to come over here, as Chairman Nunez has said himself, he wasn't hiding or roaming. He was asked to come over here by an individual. He came over, which happens daily. He was asked to go somewhere. He went there. He has cleared in a, uh, and nothing that is inappropriate, other, other and, and exactly the opposite. What he did, what he saw, and who he met with was 100 percent proper. Did the, chief of staff have, did the chief of staff, who is, in my understanding, uh, an exceptionally uh, attentive gatekeeper to who comes in and out of to the Oval Office, uh, did the chief of staff uh, know that he was on the campus? Did he approve? No, no, so remember, you're, you're okay, but but you're playing cute there. You're doing two things. One is you're talking about the Oval Office, and the other one is the campus. Right? So, no, the chief of staff does not know every single person who's on the 18 acres at any given time. They are people who are appropriately either clear or wave through the system or are escorted on in some way, shape, or form. No, we don't track every single person who's on the 18 acres. Do we know, generally speaking, who's in the Oval Office? Not all the time, because people can go in. But if there was a meeting in that case, we all sat back here. 
he made the announcement, and again, you're leaving out a key part. He actually briefed the press before he told anyone. We all found out, you, me, everyone else, that he was coming down here after he held a press conference with your colleagues to say he was coming down here based on stuff that he'd found that didn't have to do with Russia, that a whistleblower source had given him. Now, the other reporting that I'm hearing today is actually that the sources that you describe in your paper are not accurate. And while I'm not going to comment on either, I think there is an assumption that everything and the chronology that went over is accurate, which I don't believe from further reporting that it is. And I also believe that some of the comments that have come out publicly in terms of some of the Obama administration are conveniently left out of that discussion. I think that that is interesting how no one seems to really cover the fact that in a senior Obama administration with high-level clearances talked about the spreading of classified information for political purposes and air. But just to be clear, Mr. Priebus... Mr. Kushner, Mr. Bannon did not have knowledge of his uh, of his being on the campus, having this interaction with. The I, I don't. Students. I don't know. Again, you're at. You asked two questions, and you melded them together. No one knew that he was coming to speak to the president. He announced that on television during a press conference. Sean Tamara. Yeah. Um, my understanding is that Dr. Farkas left the administration in 2015. Um, so. Okay. Why is what she said in 2017 relevant to something that allegedly happened in 2016? I, the question I would have for you is exactly why is it? What is she, she says in her things? I'm urging my colleagues. I'm urging it to get the hill. But it's odd that the presumption seems to be why is it interesting? Have you asked her? No, you're the no, one you haven't. Us to so I, I, she right no no. But she's been on television talking about what she's done, and you seem to have made no. I don't believe everything I see on TV. <laughs> well, neither do I. But but I also do, I would assume that as a reporter that actually is interested in this story, a senior Obama administration official that handled Russia, Former. that Former. Uh, th yeah, well, all Obama administration officials generally. Well, she wasn't are. there in 2016. I, thank you. I appreciate the timeline, but I'm, I'm well aware of when it was. But my point is, is you seem to be rushing to her defense. At some point, she came on, she went on television and talked about actions that she and her colleagues took to spread classified information. And instead of, Jonathan, instead of defending her, it might be worth asking her what she's talking about, who she spread it to, why she did it, was it appropriate, who cleared her to do it. Maybe those are questions it can ask instead of asking me to defend why a former Obama administration official is revealing stuff that should be extremely concerning. I, so I'm going to go other, back to Tamara. Yeah, one other question, which is, are you more concerned about that or Russian interference in the presidential election? Well, I, I think that there, if I'm, as an American citizen, I'm very concerned about the fact that people potentially were sharing information about other Americans for political purposes and using um, classified information to do so and leaking it. That should be concerning to everybody. I mean... No, that's not what I said. Please stop trying to. Uh, it's not. No, just like, which is worse. Uh, no, I, and I and I guess I don't. I mean, the answer is I think if someone's interfering with our election, that's not good. I don't think that someone revealing and leaking classified information is good either. I'm not sure that you should have to choose. I think that you can have outrage and concern for both, and I don't think we should have to pick as an American whether or not which freedom we want to to have undermined. I think we should expect both of them.